right. Um, well, I'm, I'm very great to um, be on board here and uh, have a presentation about a uh, mobile application uh, developed using Vue.js and Onsen UI. Um, so just imagine that you're working in a company um, uh, like, uh, focusing on web technologies and maybe one of your clients, who is a rich client, you know, who's asking your company to develop a mobile application uh, with maybe one million dollars. And, uh, but unfortunately, um, your boss and your team have no, you know, have no experience writing in mobile applications, uh, especially for iOS and Android native. Um, but somebody can raise their hand and, um, you know, in your team and can get benefit of getting the reward of that bonus. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about uh, how you can combine you know, Vue.js and uh, Onsen UI to develop a mobile application and, and just, um, just, keep, keep just adding the capability of uh, Vue.js into a mobile space. So, um, hello again. So my name is Masa Tanaka. Um, I'm a founder and CEO of Monaka, uh, which is um, headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. Um, I'm a, you, you can call me on the Twitter of Masi or uh, GitHub at Masi Um So, yeah, so we have two projects, Onsen UI and Monaka. Uh, today I'm mainly talking about Onsen UI, it's an open source project, but um, the company name is Monaka, and which is more like a commercial product, which I saw do the uh, little demo in the very, in the very last. So uh, just um, just started talking about mobile applications. Uh, there's actually three ways of developing mobile applications using web technologies. Um, by what I mean by web technology is the technology uh, that is using HTML5 and CSS and JavaScript. Um, and there are actually uh, another technology that you can use uh, with Vue.js like uh, Wix or uh, Native Script, which is uh, kind of like web technologies, but there are more to the uh, real mobile application, native mobile application development. Um, for today's, my topic is mostly about the HTML5 based, uh, and you can leverage this um, talk to uh, develop for mobile applications and hybrid applications. Uh, and there's something between mobile and traditional mobile web applications and hybrid applications that is called progressive web apps. Um, I think this topic will be covered by Blake um, this afternoon, so I don't really get into the details today uh, here in my speech, but um, I think um, it's basically the technology is pretty similar, and all the talks that I, I, today, you know, I, I have today can be also adapted to the web, web applications in general. So uh, let's get started. So what's, a, what's actually a hybrid application, by the way? So it's, um, it's an application that's more to the native side uh, of a mobile app technology, and uh, which has a, which has an actual mobile application package. So the difference between mobile web app and a hybrid application is that hybrid application is is more like a distributed by app stores, and you can just um, you know go the users can go to Google Play Store or app stores to download the applications. Whereas you know mobile applications or progressive web apps or more like an application running on a browser, so that you can access through uh, to typing in a URL. So it's just a difference of the use case uh, and the user experience is that you can provide to the developer. But also all the entire content running on the application is pretty much exactly the same. Um, but there's some a little bit difference between, um, but there are some a little bit of an advantage of using hybrid application uh, compared to the traditional mobile application is that uh, you can access to uh, native APIs. Uh, so, so for instance, uh, like so, uh, progressive web apps uh, is capable of uh, sending a push notifications or or like you know support the offline experience uh, only, uh, but also uh, but mainly to the Android devices. Um, and iOS devices have, have not been supported the uh, progressive web apps. But whereas if you convert them into hybrid applications, all those applications can be easily um, packed in an um, APK or IPA file and you can distribute it to the app stores and you can, you can also allow extended uh, native access um, by using uh, Vue.js and JavaScript. 
So, so basically, you, you can write your own application in HTML5 and JavaScript, but you can also extend uh, native capability by writing in a Swift or, uh, or Java or whatever, so as Android SDK or uh, Kotlin or some, you know, or any, any sort of uh, Android and iOS SDKs. But um, maybe, um, maybe there's a, you know, uh, maybe ma mo many people um, here uh, wonder if, you know, that's, that's does that actually performant or not, right? Um, well, back in like uh, uh, seven or eight years ago, uh, we also confronted the same issue. Um, but actually, um, let's go to the next slide. But actually, uh, there are like uh, lots of improvements to this area, uh, which uh, this mobile web technology can be uh, very competitive to uh, native experience. So. Just um, just looking back on the order like a 2020s, uh, two, oh, sorry, uh, 2010, uh, where iPhone 4 was firstly distributed, uh, that was our first experience writing this kind of like mobile HTML5 applications and try packaging it as a hybrid application. At that moment, uh, actually the experience was not good. Uh, the HTML5 like capabilities, even like position fix, was not supported yet, uh, and this is crucial for creating a toolbar, uh, you know, mimicking a toolbar like in an iOS uh, device, but uh, it wasn't well supported over that time. But uh, things have been changed drastically, like uh, well change attribute in Chase history, and also uh, HTML5 also has a window dot request idle callback, which have, which then we can get a, a, a event from a browser that, you know, the browser is idle, so that we can do some, uh, you know, uh, rich, uh, calculations during the browser's idle time. So there are many improvement, uh, improvements in the HTML5 level, and also you know not only saying those, but also WebGL support and SVG2. And now you know what? Well, luckily, and from Android version 5, uh, all the web views and all the browsers have uh, evergreen Chrome um, embedded, so it's, so the user don't have to you know uh, upgrade the operating system itself, but only the browser. Uh, Blink engine has been updated, um, so so lots of uh, lots of lots of uh, great improvements has been done to the HTML5 mobile space, uh, and of course uh, on the left hand side, um, you know compared to iPhone 4 and the latest iPhone uh, 7, um, the CPU power, the GPU performance, you know everything has been drastically improved, uh, which makes mobile experience you know much richer and much more like uh, very fluent than um, than other devices. But um, in order to uh, develop a mobile uh, hybrid applications, we need a framework. And that's where this, uh, this framework, uh, long living framework called Cordova, or maybe uh, some of you guys all, all also know this as a phone gap, uh, has been in, uh, in this world. Um, and there, and in, by using Cordova, you can call to native APIs, and they also host uh, plugins, and all the third party, you know, all the developers are uh, publishing their own plugins to access to many native features, uh, not only like a push notifications or iTouch, but also like augmented reality or VR or anything like a Bluetooth or NFC, you know, whatever the features that we need to uh, add, add in to provide the na native experiences are pro provided as the plugins. And it's, it's of course the open source and it's, it's hosted by Apache. So, um, so this is really like a de facto standard uh, framework for building a hybrid applications. So, so assume um, you know Vue.js is a really great framework, uh, especially for you know writing SP applications, right? And for Cordova, it's also a um, very uh, very popular framework. And um, this actually you know, and by combining this, um, you know, um, w we actually you know can 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 go into the hybrid mobile space. Or hybrid, you know, progressive web app space, and and try to, you know, and try to create a uh, very rich applications. Um, but actually, um, there's a there's still something lacking by just combining Vue.js and Cordova, uh, which maybe you can uh, feel from this example over here. So this is an application that I just uh, briefly created, um, and. So this, this application is just like a mock-up application that, um, that is using uh, CSS and HTML5 to, uh, to, to mimic like a native iOS applications. 
Um, so it, it feels, it, you know, in the, in the surface, it looks really like a native application. But if you click on here, you will understand that um, oops, it's even like a worse experience. But uh, you, you see the, the screen has been changed to a different screen. Uh, and apparently, you don't feel it's native because uh, there's no animations yet. Um, so I click on you know load more here, but uh, still you know it's taking more time than I expected to uh, to load the screens. So this this you know as a screenshot it looks like a native application, but um, there is an uncanny valley of um, and even though you know this is uh, this this you know this trustfully you know faithfully implements iOS design standard, it doesn't feel like a native application. And that's something we have to solve. Uh, there's no animations and there's no user experience that, uh, that you know, provides, uh, that makes the user feel that it's a native platform. And actually, that's really challenging for the developer to fill the gap between that, that uh, my mock-up application and the real-looking native applications. And the reason is why is because on the left-hand side, um, you know, there is an iOS and Android device, uh, and they are equipped with all the different native SDKs. Uh, of course, you know, those lists or you know, action sheet, uh, dialogues, uh, fault bars. So there are so many uh, different components that you can use natively, and you can just you know, uh, plug them into your application, and your application is just done. But on the right-hand side, when you are trying to create a um, progressive web apps or hybrid applications, uh, you stuck on you know uh, developing a mobile applications just because there is nothing to fill between the web view layer and, and your logic. So so there needs to be something that fills the uh, difference between the um, the browser platform and and com and becoming competent to the native counterpart. So and here comes Onsen UI. So this is something um, we've been working for um, um, since uh, we we just started the hybrid application development, and uh, things are going very well. So what is Onsen UI? So it's a it's 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 a rich uh, collection of UI components, uh, specially designed for mobile and mobile applications. Um, iOS and Android designs are all. all are supported and automatically adjusted by the running platform. Of course, it's a hundred percent open source project, and uh, and you can you can just quickly take a look at um, what kind of components we have. So these are CSS components. So they're uh, they're defined in um, you know normal HTML5 elements, but um, but but you but you can just uh, feel you know understand how much components we have, but. Um, but I mentioned, you know, these are these are just uh, like a surface of uh, of uh, HTML5, and we need more animations and more details uh, to make them even feel like a native applications. So, by the way, um, onsen. Uh, may maybe you're wondering what what does onsen means. Uh, so, onsen is a Japanese cap term to talk uh, to to describe about SVA. Uh, you know, spa, right? So okay. spa is a SPA, single page app. So that's why you know we, we wanted to name it as an onsen. Uh, so onsen is a like a is a term for you know providing a really good experience for developing mobile applications. And that's why there's a monkey here, uh, you know, uh, dipping in an onsen, uh, which you can see in Japan. So so if you write an application using using onsen UI, um, it's a it's a single code base, but uh, the the application appearance will switch automatically based on the running platform. Uh, on the left hand side is the iOS native leash and on the right hand side is the Android like uh, applications. And this is a very simple to do application uh, which don't really have uh, big features but um, you can just uh, access to uh, this this application by uh, GitHub and you will understand uh, you know, how, how, how native experience we can get from this. So. So, uh, so by just using onsen UI, uh, it's a it's a photo taken in a Japanese actual onsen that a monkey is uh, playing with an iPhone, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if he's uh, he's playing with the onsen UI application, but I think uh, what, what what I want to say is that uh, so even like these monkeys, um, 
can capable of uh, you know use uh, mobile applications, uh, especially in Japan maybe. <laughs> so that's our onsen UI. So if you see a monkey um, like dipping in our onsen, maybe uh, please you know remind me, remind us that uh, there is an onsen UI. So uh, just briefly talking about the architecture, um, it's it's pretty unique actually. Um, onsen UI has three layers. Uh, on the very bottom is a CSS components which I did a uh, glance demo. So they're all written in pure CSS uh, in a next generation CSS called CSS Next and using post CSS for uh, for compiling into the standard CSS. And on the on the center on the middle uh, we're writing all the components in JavaScript, uh, written in pure JavaScript without any framework dependencies actually. Uh, why we can do it is because uh, we are using a technology called Web Components, uh, and we are using custom elements for, especially for uh, for creating those tags uh, as the onsen UI uh, elements. And on the on the top, um, you know, in order to uh, fill the gap between Web Components and Vue.js components, uh, we are also providing Vue.js bindings in order to support various new features like you know events or. Uh, you know, data bindings or whatever. So, so basically, um, uh, Onsen UI is a framework agnostic, but uh, we heavily, you know, uh, uh, investigating, uh, you know, devoting into Vue.js bindings in order to make a much powerful experience than a, a native, than, than the standard web component can provide. Because the web component is a really good, you know, um, specification. And recently, iOS, you know, Safari, has been introduced uh, supporting for web components since 10.3 version, uh, but still um, it's it's you know somewhat lacking the features compared to the view, to the component model which Vue.js provides. So in order to you know fill the gap between those, uh, we are creating those bindings. And actually, also UI is fully customizable. Um, this is the official application uh, for. Um, in an Italian uh, road cycle application called Giro de Italia, uh, they are made fully with onsen UI, but uh, they're they're you know extensively customizing uh, our things, so it doesn't look like a uh, you know normal onsen UI uh, or iOS or Android uh, theme anymore. But um, you can you can maybe you will understand you know how how much uh, customizations can be can be possible uh, with this onsen UI. And actually, uh, there's actually nothing, very much to say about uh, Vue.js support because it's really stand, you know, straightforward. You know, uh, on the on the top, on the top, uh, it's, I'm describing how you can just plug it in uh, using the script tag, traditional script tag. You you just uh, have you know those two CSS files included, and then uh, you just include onsen UI JSON, and view onsen UI JSON, and that's it. Uh, if you like uh, web to do with a uh, web pack. Uh, you can you can just uh, import those CSS using CSS loader, and then you know just import uh, view onsen using uh, import, and that's it pretty much. And and after doing so, uh, you can just get access to all of those um, components, uh, and you can just you know use those components uh, in, inside your uh, HTML or template uh, to fully you know make of you make use of uh, onsen UI components. So there, uh, there are more than uh, uh, I think uh, 50 components so far, and uh, mostly covered. Uh, mo most of the uh, iOS and Android uh, use cases are covered, but um, we are also very open to getting feedbacks and uh, suggestions from the users. So if you feel anything lacking in our component list, then we uh, we, we really like to uh, implement those and provide back to you guys. Too. So, uh, so just uh, just visually uh, describe what kind of components we provide. We have a kitchen sink application. So, uh, just uh, I would like to take maybe one or two minutes just describing what kind of, uh, what kind of new features we have. So, on the left hand side is iOS, and on the right hand side is Android, uh, as usual. Um, I just uh, go through with the iOS design. So, one feature is pull hook. Uh, you, it, it's just like a you know traditional pull hook, you know common pull hook example. And for dialogues, we have we cover um, you know most of the dialogue design, and they are different uh, when when it's running on Android and iOS, and you know you, you also feel the animations are also different. Uh, 
and they're you know officially um, like you know uh, carefully designed in a brought in a design standard. Uh, we also have like a post and uh, like a model leader, and also like an action sheet. And of course, you know this action sheet is only for iOS devices. Uh, but in order to provide a cross-platform capability, you know sometimes we also want an action sheet in Android device because we don't want to, you know, it's it's maybe you know sometimes it's reluctant to 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 provide the same capability for Android in a different component. So that's why we also have a action sheet in Android, and in this case, you know, the appearance was will change, uh, and it's. It's a little bit, you know, mimicking the Android, but there is nothing like this kind of interface actually in Android. But you can still access those. Uh, just go back. Uh, one of the one of the cool cool feature is this infinite scrolling. Uh, so this is this, so this list have I think more than I don't know maybe one more than one million or. Uh, you know many many items here and if you see this um, this this actually you know uh, runs very smooth it, it only renders the visible part of the DOM and you know hides all the rest of the unused you know hidden DOMs that's why you know we can accelerate uh, all the uh, all the uh, renderings uh, even though the list is like way too long and in the forms, um, we have um, also, we also have many components um, like uh, switches or um, or this kind of like a cross um, this uh, let's say like a uh, um, input tags and so on and so forth. So so here's so so even that's a that's a kitchen sink applications. Um, I would like to uh, describe a little bit about how you can get started. So I'm going to I will go back to the console and so 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 as I mentioned uh, you can you can just use uh, you know, you know import view on say UI but in this but for for today I, we also want to introduce um, something for view command so we also uh, have a template called view Cordova webpack uh, which is uh, really useful for you to just start creating a Cordova applications. Uh, within, with 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 GLI. So when you do this, um, it, it takes a little bit of time to you know download the template. But um, once it's done, you know you can just um, you know like configure your project as what you do in uh, another GLI templates. And you also support E2E and unit testing. And once it's done, uh, you can just just do npm install, and the project is just done. It, it, it actually takes some time, so I just uh, cancel this and just go to the already pre pre made template. So this is a this is a template uh, that I created, and let's let's open this in a VS Code. So this is the VS Code uh, opening this project, which I and. By just doing npm run dev, um, you will see this application running on a browser using Webpack dev server. Okay. Okay. Here it comes. So this is uh, this is just uh, you know the onsen UI version of a uh, Vue.js template, um, and you can see that the uh, onsen UI components are ready. So. I just wanted to um, do some quick demo for this. So actually, this is a this is a Vue CLI. Uh, uh, this is a VS Code with a Vueter uh, bindings, uh, Vueter extensions installed. So you can do the you know auto completion. And what more? We actually I was spending some more time you know uh, adding the code suggestions to uh, to this VS Code, and uh, thanks for uh, yeah. And uh, Pine, uh, you know, willingly helped me to do this. So yeah, it was it was, it was really easy for me to actually integrate this uh, auto suggestions into the, his his extension. It just takes like a one or two hours to do this, but uh, it's it's really good. So yeah, so you you can do like uh, you know you can add. Uh, so it's, this is like a place. So you can just add if you want to add a button, you can just uh, 
you can you can use the V on button and and when you hit save, um, you should be able to. Hmm. Let me refresh. Oh yeah, here's the button here. So, so so yeah, it's it's really simple. So all the all those uh, uh, on thing components are already defined, and you can just use those components to you know to to compose your mobile application. So 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 not for now, I was talking about uh, you know how how easy it is to actually create a mobile application um, using VJS. But uh, there's one more thing that is missing, actually. And that's a workflow uh, in terms of, you know, or in a sense, it's a tool chain. Um, even though, you know, it's, you can easily create, you know, a hybrid or progressive web apps and run on your browser, what's, what's the experience it will be uh, when you, it comes to testing on real mobile device? Because, uh, as I mentioned, Cordova provides, you know, thousands of plugins and they are not actually accessible from the web context. So that's why you actually need a real device uh, in order to you know, debug your applications. And that, that's what you know, we are also providing as a, as a company called Monica, and that tool, tool name is Monica, uh, that, that can do the you know, debugging and the remote building of iOS and Android application. And also, you know, distribution to to like a app, iTunes Connect, or distribution to like Hockey App or DeployGate for the testing distributions. So I just wanted to um, do uh, the last demo using this tool. So I'm just going to uh, close this. And if you do uh, npm install Monica, you can you can just use a Monica command. Um, and this is supplement to Vue CLI. So right now, I'm in the uh, same project as what I created in Vue CLI. And if, if I just do Monica demo command, it will just run uh, and just show the same application that I created. Um, and you can just you know, check the designs uh, with, for both iOS and Android at the same time on a browser. And um, let me see if uh, this works. Um, if, and there's a, also a command called the Monica debug. If I run this command, uh, okay, so debugger did connected. So which means I, I'm actually um, installing, so sorry, this is very small, but uh, I'm installing a companion application called Monica debugger, which you can download from Google Play Store or you know, App Store. And I, I'm, you can just run the same application over here uh, without doing any compilations. You just install Monica command and just do Monica debug and all the uh, assets that you've created locally are transferred to uh, mobile applications. And it, it also actually does auto reload. So it's really handy handy way for you to debug applications. And once that's finished, uh, you can just do Monica remote build. And then this time, I'll just uh, add hyphen hyphen browser so that um, you will see you know, what kind of UI we have. Um, so without the hyphen hyphen browser, it just you know automatically builds on on the command line. But if you add that, uh, you can have a you know visual interface uh, to 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 how to you know build that for for I iOS and Android. So when we click for Android, um, it it actually you know start building. Um, you can do the same thing for iOS uh, on a browser. So you don't really need any local SDKs installed. So and this really you know, enhances uh, the development cycle. So if you're interested, yeah, please uh, also you know, take a look at this Monica. But Monica is totally independent of Onsen UI. So, um, so we are so welcome if you only use Onsen UI and just you know, use your local building environment to develop your applications. OK. So, so, so far, we, we have been doing our RC re release for Vue Onsen UI. Uh, but actually, for today, we, we, we finally released a stable version. So now Vue Onsen UI has been uh, in a finalized, and it's, uh, it's, it's going to be the official release. And 
But still, we have uh, many more features that we are expecting to implement, especially the like a swipeable, more like a swiping experience and also um, more application templates and patterns so that you can do more like a cookie cutting and also uh, asset server-side rendering and virtual support. And they will, they will become uh, very soon, so please, uh, be, you know, please uh, stay tuned. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so finally, uh, thank you very much for listening to my presentation. So, uh, in a conclusion, you know, uh, if you want to develop uh, mobile applications, either hybrid or progressive of our traditional web apps, uh, please consider Onsen UI and please enjoy the relaxing mobile application experience. Uh, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.